My name is Dr. Sam Osmanagic. More than 35 years, I have been researching ancient civilizations, pyramids, and megalithic sites all over the world. And I have concluded that almost everything they teach us about the ancient history is wrong. The origin of man, civilizations, and pyramids. For pyramids, they've been telling us they are built in Egypt and Mexico which is wrong, because they were built all over the planet. There are 250 pyramids in the central Chinese province of Shanxi. There are pyramids in western Java, Gunung Padang, 29,000 years old. Pyramids in Cambodia, like Koh Ker, beautiful seven-tier pyramid. Seven pyramids on the island of Mauritius. 224 Nubian pyramids in the northern Sudan. 155 pyramids in Egypt, 43 pyramids on the island of Sicily, 104 pyramids on Canary Islands. We have pyramids in Bolivia, we have pyramids in Peru, more than 300. We have pyramids in the Central America, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, Belize, and Mexico, almost 100,000 pyramids. We have pyramids in the United States, Cahokia, pyramids, over 200 of them in the National Park in southwestern corner of the state of Illinois. And of course, we have pyramids in Europe, three Palencia pyramids in the northern Spain. We have pyramids in Italy, the most known and the biggest complex, Monte Vecchia pyramids in the northern Italy. We have 16 pyramids in Greece, Hellenicon, the biggest one, and finally in Bosnia. So. The world of the pyramids was the world of the past. In April of 2005, I first came to the central Bosnian town of Visoko. Not because of pyramids, but to visit the local museum. And then I saw this. Everybody called this a natural hill. However, I was able to see four sides, one in the front, second one to the left, the third one to the right, the fourth one in the back. I could see the triangular faces, four triangular faces. From here, we can see clearly two corners. And then we can see the same slope from bottom to the top. Geometrically speaking, this is a pyramid. I took a compass, and compass showed me that this side perfectly matched cosmic north. The one in the back, south, east, west. And this is how the pyramids were built. In China, all of them aligned with the cosmic north. All, all the Egyptian pyramids, north. Most of the Peruvian, north. Some of the Mexican, north. All Cahokia pyramids, north. Now, According to the Bosnian State Institute of Geodesy, the error from the perfect north of this northern side is zero degrees, zero minutes, and 12 seconds. The most precise orientation on the planet. Even better precision than the northern side of the great Pyramid of Egypt, Cheops or Khufu. They have error zero degrees, two minutes. Here, zero degrees, zero minutes, 12 seconds. In October of 2005, I wrote my first book about the discovery. And in a very short period of time, I received more than 12,000 emails of support. I realized the Bosnian pyramids are not one man show, but the cultural heritage of the planet. I established non-profit, non-government foundation under the name Archaeological Park Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun Foundation. And in April of 2006, we started excavation. One meter below the layers of soil, we started discovering construction material, the first material proofs of the huge structure. The northern slope of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. This side perfectly aligned to the cosmic north. 
Back in 2006, in April, we announced that we are going to start uncovering the parts of the pyramids. And we projected 16 sections to be uncovered. We call them archaeological trenches or archaeological sondas. This is our sonda number 4C. The idea was to uncover the pyramid on all four sides at different heights, at the base, in the middle, and close to the top. However, when we got our permissions and announcements, one month before we started digging, in March of 2006, 23 leading Bosnian archaeologists, geologists, museum curators, anthropologists, they signed a petition asking the Bosnian government to stop the digging even before it started. What was their problem? Well, if we claimed that one meter below the layers of soil is artificial structure, the only way to find out that is to dig and to remove the soil. And we were spending our own money and energy and organization and equipment and tools and archaeologists from different countries. If those people thought that there was nothing below the layers of soil, they should simply let us dig one meter, five meters, 50 meters. We could go all the way to New Zealand if willing. We were spending our own money. But no, they wanted to stop the research and digging. Not very scientific. Well, we started digging in April of 2006, and the Bosnian Prime Minister came when he received the petition. He saw those rectangular blocks. He said, well, this is man-made concrete. He saw hundreds of visitors. He said, wow, this is good for the Bosnian tourism and economy. Dr. Osman Agic, keep digging, and don't worry about the jealous Bosnian scientists. So we kept digging. On this particular section, this was the first block that we discovered. It's rectangular in shape, four and a half meter long, one and a half meter wide, 45 centimeters thick. It has a mass of seven tons. Obviously, it hasn't been made by the mother nature, but, but in, by intelligent hands. Next to this one is another one, and another one, and another one. But this is just the first row of blocks. Below, there is a second row, the third row, the fourth row. Mother Nature does not construct, but intelligent hands. Now, when we see those blocks in their structure, we can see a lot of stones of different sizes and different colors. Large, medium, and small size. We can see gray and white and brown and red. This is identical structure, like the material in underground tunnels, which is very logical. The ancients were digging their way to make those underground tunnels, a huge underground network, and they used that material, pebbles, rocks, sand, mixed it with the water and melted clay, which they use as the binding material, and they got the best quality concrete. We have sent samples to seven institutes for construction materials in Europe, to Politecnico uh, in uh, Torino, Geopolymer Institute in France, institutes in Czech Republic, Slovakia, Bosnia. They all told us this was an artificially made concrete. Well, if it is concrete, then you can determine the quality. Two elements are major. The first one is hardness. Harder the concrete, better the quality. The second one is the water absorption. Less absorption, better the quality. When it comes to hardness, our concretes in the 20th century had hardness on a scale from 10 to 60 megapascals. 60, best quality, made in Germany and USA. In 21st century, we managed to develop the formula and to get the hardness of 110 megapascals, and that concrete was used to build 
the largest building on the planet, the Burj Khalifa skyscraper in Dubai, 110. This concrete goes all the way to 134 megapascals, the best quality ever. The second element is the water absorption. Less absorption, better the quality. Why? Because if the water can get inside the concrete during the winter time, it freezes. And once you have an ice, ice has a tendency to get bigger. Once it gets bigger, the concrete breaks. So the idea is to keep the water absorption very low. Our norms allow up to 3%. Here we have only 1%. It's superior. Well, if it is superior, how come we have so many pieces around me? Look at the pyramid. Slope of 45 degrees. At 45 degrees, farmers could not use this land for the agriculture or to keep domestic animals. Therefore, it was worthless. So below us, at the base of the pyramid, we have a gypsy's village, people with no money. They got the land almost for free. Now they need to build their houses. They don't have money to buy the construction material, cement. So what they would do, they would uncover one, one and a half meter of soil, and then they would be finding those beautiful blocks. They brought the dynamite, explosives from mining facilities and a lot of mines around us, and then they would be destroying the area. And from the big blocks, they were getting smaller pieces, which they could handle and take them down to the places where they were building their houses and their foundations. So unfortunately, several big sections of pyramid have been destroyed forever. In archaeology, we have five questions. What, who, when, how, and why? And we've been trying to answer all of them at the same time. The question when is very intriguing. We can see that the pyramid has been covered by soil. The science that investigates the origin of soil is called pedology. Institute for Pedology from Bosnia has analyzed the soil samples from the Sun and the Moon pyramid. And their conclusion was that the soil had an age between 12 and 15,000 years. So if the soil is up to 15,000 years, it means that the construction below the soil is much older. In the year 2012, our archaeologist Nicola Bisconti, with his crew of volunteers, were uncovering our trench number 4A. And there, on the top of the blocks, he discovered organic material. Since it was on the top, it meant that it could give us a minimum age of the structure. We did radiocarbon dating, and the age was 24,800 years, plus minus 200 years. So we go back for 25,000 years, and this is only the minimum age of the structure. So finally, in the year of 2013, our Archaeologist from New Zealand, Tim Moon, with his crew of volunteers, discovered fossilized leaves on one of the sections, our trench number 12, between the first and second layer of block. It meant that during the construction, the builders were laying the first row of blocks, the second, the third. The wind was blowing, bringing those two fossilized leaves, and then they placed the final those two fossilized leaves will give us the exact age of the structure. We did uh, radiocarbon dating, 29,200 years plus minus 400 years. And this is radiocarbon date. The calibrated date or calendar age is about 15% more. According to the astrophysicist Dr. Paul Aviolet from the US, the age of the Bosnian period of the sun is 34,000 years, which makes it the oldest pyramid and the known structure on the face of the planet. 
They teach us in schools that uh, our civilization started 6,000 years back with Sumerians, Babylon, Akkad, Assyria, Hittite, ancient Egypt, ancient India. But this is uh, just the last cycle of humanity. Before this one, there was another one, which was interrupted by the huge catastrophes and the time known as the end of the last ice age. They tell us also that 10,000 plus years back, we were at the primitive stage, cavemen. And today, in 21st century, we are the most developed, most intelligent, and most beautiful beings. Wrong. Over 12,000 years back, there was another civilization reaching their peaks. 18,000 years ago, there was another one, huge global catastrophe. 30,000 years ago, again, global catastrophe. 55,000 and 75,000 back, thousand years back again. So, the history of humanity is not evolution, but cycle, after cycle, after cycle. We need to change that in the history books. And the change starts right here in the heart of Bosnia. The northern slope of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, our archaeological trench number five. We started excavation back in 2006 with a small section here. We called it 5A and over there 5B. And every year we were extending those sections and eventually it has become one huge open section, 50 meters by 50 meters, exposing thousands of tons of concrete. We learned that this northern side is the most precisely aligned with the cosmic north. Also, this is the largest pyramid structure on the planet. And then, we have the best quality concrete, the hardest concrete on the planet. And finally, this is the oldest structure on the planet. Those elements forever change what we knew about the ancient past. Let's see how they made this particular section. It seems that they poured the concrete here first. We can see the straight edge here. And then the second section was here, going a little bit under the first one. And then the third section comes right over there, going under the second one, the fourth section going under the third one, creating a series of steps. Why would they do that? Because of the structural stability. If the blocks were one next to each other, or the second one was a little bit higher up, it would mean that during the some tectonic movements of earthquakes, there would be a danger that blocks would collapse. So they knew how to make structurally very stable construction, which will last not for thousands, but for tens of thousands of years, for eternity. I am surrounded by the concrete blocks of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. One and a half meter below the layers of soil and clay we've been discovering so far the biggest blocks on the pyramid. Now, here we have a straight line that divides two blocks. The corner is missing, but originally the size was four and a half meter by four and a half meter, four and a half, four times. This was a square block, another square block, and another one. Mother Nature does not make square blocks with artificial concrete. In order to determine the mass of the block, this is the formula. Four and a half times four and a half is 18 square meters. Times the thickness, about one meter, 18 cubic meter, multiplied by the specific weight of 2.2, it's about 39, almost 40 tons. 40 tons, 40 tons, 40 tons. The Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun consists of at least 20 million tons of the best quality concrete built 30,000 years plus ago. Starting 2017, Foundation has changed its own strategy. 
we have started buying the properties of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. This is one of the such properties. It is below so-called protected zone. So far in 2017 and 2018, we have purchased more than 7,000 square meters of pyramid. And we started excavation. In this particular case, which is close to the edge of the pyramid, between the north and eastern slope, one and a half meter below the soil, all over there, three and a half meter, we discovered more layers of artificially made concrete. At the time we discovered it, it was flashing the lights coming from crystal. This is the reason why we named this section the crystal concrete. Why crystal? Very important mineral. We have noticed that on several places the builders were bringing dolomite, which is not characteristic for this area. Dolomite has a lot of white crystal. White crystal transforms one type of the energy into another one. For example, if you have electromagnetic field, it hits crystal and then through the piezoelectrical effect, it transforms this energy to the ultrasound. Or vice versa, if you have ultrasound or sound hitting the crystal, then you can get the electricity. And of course, the purpose of pyramids have a lot to do with different forms of the energy. Especially close to the edges, the ancient builders accumulated huge quantities of crystal. And we have witnessed that back in 2012, when we were uncovering the edge of the pyramid, 2017 and 2018, when we find it in huge quantities. So it will bring us closer to the real purpose of pyramids. Since 2005, when I established my hypothesis that the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun is the biggest and the oldest pyramid on the planet, the mother of all pyramids, we have been visited by a number of independent scientists from different fields. For example, Dr. Ali Barakat, from Egypt, the famous geologist and archaeologist, after 42 days of uh, investigation, concluded in his written report that the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun is a man-made pyramid. After that, triple PhD, Dr. Nabil Svelim, also from Egypt, now late Nabil Svelim, concluded that the, the Cheops, or the Great Pyramid of Egypt, is the most magnificent pyramid on the planet. But the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun is the biggest on the planet because it fulfilled the, the criteria for the pyramids. He also said that the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun is a very complicated construction project which is of great importance for the whole world. Geophysicist from Russia, Professor Oleg Havroshkin from Russian Schmidt Institute from Moscow, after two years of independent research with his geophysical instruments, concluded that the Bosnian pyramids match Egyptian pyramids in shape, form, and seismic values. Howard University uh, expert Paul von Ward came to Bosnia investigating the pyramids and concluded that the Bosnian pyramids are one of the most interesting discoveries in archaeology back in 2010. Archaeologist Professor Ezra Zubrov from Buffalo State University, United States, he said that we need to find out who built the Bosnian pyramids, when they were built, and what is the connection between the tunnels and the pyramids. Double PhD J.J. Hertog from California, after his one-week visit and research, said, Egyptology will have to redefine the pyramid definition after Bosnian pyramid discovery. The famous pyramid builder and researcher Valery Uvarov from St. Petersburg, uh, Russia, he said that the pyramids in Visoko are one of the oldest buildest building ever built on the face of the planet. These pyramids played the role of GPS markers on the planet. Astrophysicist Dr. Paula Violet 
from the United States after his investigation concluded Bosnian pyramids are the biggest discovery in archaeology. Expert in Tesla's energy, engineer Goran Marjanovic from Belgrade, Serbia, said that the Bosnian pyramids are artificial objects created with careful planning of their shape and location. Technology whose purpose was to preserve the primary cosmic vibrations. Finally, the famous Russian geophysicist Konstantin Korotkov, after three visits, said the Bosnian pyramid discovery equals the discovery of the Mayan pyramids. So, the experts who actually came to Bosnia, investigated the Bosnian pyramids, have done energy and measurement, lab analysis, radiocarbon dating, and sample testing, have no doubt this is really one of the biggest archaeological discovery ever, a huge construction complex in the heart of Bosnia. All 250 pyramids in China, in the central province of Shanxi, are covered by soil and vegetation. Tens of thousands of Mayan pyramids in Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, and Belize are in the jungle, in the forest. 95% are not visible to the naked human eye. All Cahokia pyramids in the United States, in the Illinois, are covered by soil and the grass. So, majority of the world pyramids are really covered by vegetation. Of course, we know about Egyptian pyramids at the Giza Plateau, for example, or Dakhshur, or Meidum, El Lakhun. All those pyramids are actually visible because the climate is different. It's sunny, no rain, no greenery, so you can see blocks on top of each other. But the majority in the world are different. Bosnian pyramids are no exception. The Bosnian pyramid of the sun, completely covered by soil, bushes, and planted trees back in 1960s. The Bosnian Pyramid of the Moon is behind me. Also, we can see covered by bushes and plants. The height of the biggest Egyptian pyramid, the Khufu, is 147 meters. The height of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Moon behind me, 190 meters. So this is the second world, the largest pyramid behind me. So two biggest pyramids are here in the heart of Balkan Peninsula. It's the fact that redefine our history. This is four-sided pyramid. Behind me is a perfect western slope. In the back is east, north, and south. Why is the orientation so important? Egyptologists do not know that because they don't understand. Well, everything is energy in the nature. Our planet is a huge energy ball. There are two major energy flows on our planet, north, south, and east, west. When you make four-sided pyramid and perfectly oriented to the cardinal points, it automatically initiates the movement of the energy first inside the pyramid, through the top of the pyramid, and then off the pyramid. Inside the pyramid, energy flow goes hitting one third at the height, then going all the way to the top, to two thirds, down to one third, completing the circle. That's why orientation is so important. Also, energy flow going through the top, like a spiral of the pyramid, and the third one going off the pyramid in concentric circles, affecting the societies, communities, agriculture, and so on. So now we are getting closer to the purpose of pyramids. Base of the western slope of the Bosnian pyramid of the moon. 190 meters in height, second largest pyramid on the planet, but different in design than the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. Over there, we have concrete blocks. It's a true pyramid. Over here, 
we have terraces, terrace after terrace after terrace. Material, it's a sandstone based. What we can see here are the sandstone plates of different sizes. Sometimes square, sometimes rectangular, sometimes six sides. We know that in the megalithic period on the planet, five to eight thousand years back, we did have the construction where people were using different sizes of the stones, blocks, megaliths. And of course, much before that, 12,000 plus years also, it seems that it had something to do with the structural stability of the objects and showing the superiority comparing to us. Now, when we started excavation here back in 2006, 2007, a number of geologists from Bosnia, Croatia, Italy, France, United Kingdom, United States, started saying, oh, this is all natural. It was one huge tectonic plate, and then during the tectonic movements, you know, the, the plate started breaking, you know, north-south. During the next tectonic movement, it started breaking east-west, and this is what we have on the Moon pyramid. However, when we take a closer look, we can see that if there was a north-south break, then this line would go continuously here. It is not the case. It goes north-south, then 90 degrees break, again 90 degrees, and then 90 degrees, it continues over there. Meaning that somebody actually purposely made these rectangular plates, place it over here. They made another one, which they cut in that way that it follows the previous one. We made another one, and another one. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six sides. Not only that, when they were cutting this piece, we can see the cutting marks here. Probably they had some type of the tool or instrument, like today we use the, you know, the saws, the metal saws, so we can see how they were cutting it, and then the saw, continue cutting the surface of this plate. So it's a plate after plate after plate after plate, different sizes with very intriguing surface. We can see this wavy pattern and every plate has different wavy pattern. Were they using some existing natural plates exposed to the lake water or they were making this pattern, at this point, it is not clear. Let's take a look of this terrace. It climbs up at uh, 8 degrees slope. It's going from this west side to the south side, coming back like a spiral. Reminding us of Ziggurat's phenomenon back in Sumer and Babylon. The next thing, we can see 8 degrees going down in the center under the pyramid. Now, they made distinction, they made the sections of 8 meters, collecting, most probably collecting the water. So, if we start from this block, which is a little bit raised, comparing to the next one, Eight meters further away, we can see that there is another little step. So, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. And you see here, a little step. Again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Another step over here. So. Most probably, when they were collecting the water, they wanted to make sure that water goes under, you know, the pyramid and uh, being collected into a water reservoir. Why would we have a water reservoir under the pyramid of the moon? Well, we have 
not only this one, but also under the sun and under the dragon pyramid, the water reservoirs. Why? Well, by now we know that pyramids were huge energy machines. And the pyramid energy is able to improve the molecular structure of any objects of any being. Now, in this particular case, we have water. Being exposed to pyramid energy, it becomes a healing water. So, under the moon pyramid, we have a healing water, under the sun, under the dragon. Interestingly enough, from the top of the sun pyramid to the top of the moon pyramid, 2,180 meters. From the top of the moon, top of the dragon, 2,180 meters. Dragon back to the sun, 2,180. So they form equilateral triangle, a perfect geometrical shape. And in those three pyramids, different in height, design, and material, we have water. So we have a little bit different pyramid energies, and they affect the water differently. In any case, it is healing water, but different properties. It's like with our mineral waters today. One mineral water has more magnesium, another one calcium, and so on. But they are all good. Here, they are all good also. Now the question is, what's happening in the middle, in the center of the triangle? I believe that the waters are connected also creating a big underground lake connected with the tunnels. And in this lake, we have supercharged, super healing water. So more mysteries to be uncovered. At this point, we won't be working at the center because it is the private property, does not belong to us. But when the situation and when the time is right, I'm hoping to go get there do more investigation. We are at the second archaeological trench on the Bosnian Pyramid of the Moon. As we remember, the first one had a slope of 8 degrees climbing up and 8 degrees going inside the pyramid. What we have here is a straight terrace with 8 degrees going inside, with one slope inside. The next trench will show us that the slope will be going down. There is no way that Mother Nature can make three different slopes going up, straight, and down within 100 meters of distance. In a case of a big tectonic movement, the whole mountain or hills move, but then we can follow the natural blocks, they always have the same slope. Archaeological trench number 20, western slope of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Moon. The ancient builders used sandstone plates and blocks to make this beautiful terrace, this pavement. Blocks on this terrace are reaching several hundred kilos. Sandstone is material easy to work with. You put some water, you can cut it really easily. What we have here is a beautiful top layer of blocks. But below, there is another terrace, another layers of blocks. And below, the third one. Of course, Mother Nature does not make terraces like this, especially not three rows, one on top of each other. What we can see here is that this terrace slopes down. The first one climbing up at 8 degrees, second one straight, this one going down. Of course, it's not Mother Nature, but intelligent hands. When you make a spiral, then you are having something like this. Now, they got a little curvature here. The way they achieve that, they have one rectangular block which they cut in the middle and then they placed another one getting this little curve and then continuing. And not only that, at the end of this terrace we can see 
a step. Mother Nature does not make terraces with the stairs, but intelligent hands. So, we are getting all the proofs that the Bosnian pyramid of the sun and the moon are constructions, artificially made objects. The first five years of our projects, 2005, 6, all the way to 2010, we spent proving that we have huge construction complex above the ground and a huge below the ground. It was time to keep moving up and trying to find the answer. What was the real purpose of pyramids? The story about the Bosnian pyramids started with my view of the what we know today as the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. Four sides, triangular faces, perfect orientation. We established non-profit foundation. We started digging, removing soil from the above rectangular, square, and other concrete blocks. We took samples, we analyzed them. It is uh, the best quality concrete. And then we started finding fossilized leaves between concrete blocks, we established the age through the radiocarbon dating in Kiev, 29,200 plus minus 400 years. And then we realized that the ancients were applying the knowledge of sacred geometry in building the pyramids. What are the elements of sacred geometry? Number pi, 3.14. Number phi, golden ratio, 1.618. But also other irrational numbers like square root of number two, square root of number three, 1.42, 1.73. Why? Because irrational numbers are endless. They don't, they don't have a finite. They don't have final value. They were alive for the ancient people. So when we connect the top of the sun pyramid with the top of the moon pyramid, to the top of Dragon Pyramid, back to the sun, we are getting perfect equilateral triangle, 2,180 meters between the tops, inner angles at 60 degrees. You have sacred geometry, you have movement of the energy. So back in 2006, we thought that pyramids had something to do with the energy. And then thanks to the technology of the PIP photography, founder, Dr. Harry Oldfield, who personally came here in 2007, we realized that there is a big difference between ambiental fields of the natural hills, cities, and pyramids. One side, the pyramid mountain, I'm um, sorry, the, the natural mountain of Avala in Serbia has horizontal fields. The little village in western Serbia, horizontal fields. Pointy mountain in Bosnia, but natural, horizontal fields. However, the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, vertical fields, Sun Pyramid, vertical, vert vertical from different angles, and different times, 2007, 2011, 2015, always vertical fields. But not only the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, also other pyramids, the Moon Pyramids, Dragon Pyramid, Love Pyramid, Temple of Mother Earth, Tumulus, Artificial Conical Hill. All the structures in the Bosnian Valley of the Pyramids are actually energetically active. They've been active at least for 12 years since we've been doing our measurements. But for sure, they've been active for tens of thousands of years. So we realized in order to figure out the purpose of pyramids, we could not use the knowledge of archaeologists, geologists, anthropologists, historians, museum curators. Nobody teaches them about the true purpose of pyramids. We needed real experts, real scientists, physicists, electrical engineers, sound engineers, telecommunication engineers, people with the scientific instruments. And they started to come to Bosnia. Teams from Germany, Serbia, Croatia, Slovenia, from Italy, from Finland, they would come and measure. For example, using the drone, hanging the instruments like oscilloscope, we would fly over the top of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun 
and we realized that there is several energy phenomena. The most interesting is electrical field, electrical only, without the magnetism, which starts as the energy beam, four and a half meter in radius, and then expands at the height of the 21 meter. It is 20 meter wide. Then it's getting narrow and expands and narrow, expands, narrow, frequency of 28 kilohertz. Well, for the physicists and engineers, no doubt. This was scalar waves or torsion fields or Tesla waves. Well, we call them Tesla scalar waves. Nikola Tesla, 120 years ago, was experimenting with the non-conventional waves, which we can call today Tesla scalar waves. In the last 50 years, Russian theoretical physicists have been experimenting with this type of the waves. Their main feature is that they are thicker than the speed of light. The second one, they can move through the universe, even through the cosmic bodies, without losing the energy. So they are ideal medium to transport the energy and information. And finally, direction of the Tesla scalar waves on the top of the Bosnian plane of the Sun well, at the noon time, they were oriented a little bit more to the south. In the afternoon, southwest. That's how our sun moves. In the morning, east, noon, south, afternoon, southwest, evening, west. What does that mean? Does it mean that the scalar waves from the top of the Bosnian period of the sun are communicating with our sun? And through the sun, using it as a cosmic gate with other solar systems, and other galaxies all the way to the center of the universe. It's very possible. In that case, the pyramid energy and the scalar waves are becoming the part of the system which we can call cosmic internet. Now, the scalar waves are much quicker than the speed of light. Well, according to Einstein's hypothesis, the biggest speed the universe is the speed of light, almost 300,000 kilometers per second, which is a huge speed. However, in the cosmic relations, it's rather slow. On our planet, it's fine, but when we send the light to our sun, it takes seven and a half minutes to get there. From our planet to the northern star, 700 years. From our planet to the center of the galaxy, Milky Way, 40,000 years. From our planet, to the center of the universe, where the old guy with the white robe and the white bird is sitting, being busy creating the worlds and the life and the universe and the galaxies. It takes five billion years. And by the time the creator is sending the message back to our planet, another five billion years. So 10 billion years is simply too long for the cosmic communication. We need something much quicker. The scalar waves travel at the speed 10 billion times bigger than the speed of light. So it's ideal speed to communicate in the universe because instantly you are getting information from one end of the galaxy to another one. So potentially the first purpose of pyramid energy is that they were made as the communication devices. What is the second purpose of the pyramid energy? What is the most precious thing in our life? It is our health, to live a healthy life. Well, we have noticed as people go to the tunnels under the Bosnian Valley of Pyramids, they breathe good. Deeper they go, they breathe better and better. Not very logical, but nothing is logical in Bosnia. Now, we notice also that people who have asthma or some respiratory problems, after one visit, they don't need inhalers, the air pumps anymore. People who have high blood pressure, it gets normalized. People who have high glucose in the blood, it comes to the normal levels. For example, this girl from Slovakia, Veronica, she had the problem with the lung capacity using only 47% of her lungs. After three years of therapies, nothing was helping her. She came to Bosnia, visited the tunnels two times, and then it went up to 84%.
We also notice that the people with the high glucose in the blood, for example, the team from uh, Prague, one of the guys, Yirji, had 7.8 sugar in the blood. After one visit, it dropped to 5.1. We had people with 10.5 dropping to 5.7. There is no single medicine that can reduce the sugar in the blood from 10.7 to 5.7 after one hour. However, it seems that the tunnels in Bosnia can. Why? Well, there are a combination of 10 different elements. The first one, the best electromagnetic field produced by the pyramids. The second one, the best ultrasound frequency of 28 kilohertz, which is levitation frequency produced by pyramids. The third one, extremely low frequency, called the Schumann resonance, 7.83, is produced by the pyramids. Now, today, that frequency has been changed. That is the frequency of our planet. But due to a big number of uh, bad electromagnetic generators, like mobile phones, computers, laptops, microwaves, electrical grids, American Project HARP. So much bad electromagnetic field has been generated. It is going to ionosphere, putting a pressure on our planet. And it starts vibrating higher. 8 hertz, 10 hertz, 12 hertz, 15 hertz. These are not big differences between 7.83 and 15, but it is very noticeable for our body on the cellular level. We simply don't live in our original natural energy field no more. And we feel that pressure every morning when we wake up. We got the pressure, we got the stress, which lasts for 24 hours a day. 34 years ago, it was not like that. Well, besides the Schumann resonance, several more factors in the tunnels. Number four, we have very high concentration of negative ions. Negative ions are very good, as the medical science knows because they raise the level of oxygen in our body. They clear the atmosphere from dust. They kill viruses and bacteria. More negative ions, better for us. In our homes, offices, apartments, low concentration of negative ions, 100 of them per cubic centimeter. We go outside to the downtowns of big cities, 400. Villages, 800. By the rivers, 1,500. The top of the mountains, in the pine tree forests, 4,000. In Bosnia, Olympic mountain, Igman, is the biggest concentration of negative ions in Bosnia. It is 4,000. In the tunnels, between 20,000 and 40,000. Somebody was building underground healing facility. The next element, the cosmic radiations. We live on the surface, a lot of cosmic radiations coming our way, some of them harmful. In the tunnels, 35 meters below the ground, no cosmic radiations. The next one, underground natural radioactivity. We walk on the street, we're not even aware that this radioactivity is hitting our body, presenting in other enemies to our body cells. They fight cosmic radiations, they fight what's coming from underground. In the tunnels, using Geiger counters, we concluded that the values of natural radioactivity are 10 times lower than the minimum allowed. The next one, underground water. They always generate bad energy for us. Well, in the tunnels, we have a series of ceramic blocks strategically laid out that neutralize negative, transform into the positive energy. And finally, two things that we produce with our technology. The mobile phone signals started at 0.75 G, today at 5 gigahertz. Very bad for us. This is the frequency of the microwave that causes the cancers. And the last one, Wi-Fi. We can't live without internet. However, Wi-Fi in Europe, 4G, 4 gigahertz. In Bosnia, 3G. In America, 5G. Again, frequencies of the ultrasound. So, all these things are not present in the tunnels. The moment you get in, for the first time in your life, the body cells don't have enemies. They can start doing their job. What is their job? To fix the problems in our body, to start the regeneration process, to start the self-healing process. 
Therefore, the next potential purpose of pyramids is the self-healing process. Number three, what is the most important liquid in our life? It is water. We are finding tunnels with the water. So far, five of them with the water sections. And we've been doing analysis of this water. No viruses, no bacteria. It vibrates very high. What does that mean? The water that we drink at home, the city water or the bottled water, also has no viruses and bacteria. How? Because we use chlorine to kill viruses and bacteria. Chlorine is a poison and we have it in our water. The next one, fluorides, poison. We have it in our water. The next one, traces of heavy metals, poisonous. We have it in our water that we drink, the bottled water or city water. Well, in the case of the water in Bosnian pyramid tunnels, no poisons. Water that we drink today in the bottles is energetically dead water. Water from the tunnels energetically alive. We sent samples of our water to Dr. Masaru Emoto before he died, and he was doing uh, analysis of two samples, one of the city water from Isoko, one of the pyramid water. The city water, the results are right here. We can see it that the structure is deformed. It's a low level of energy. But even if you take this water and give it to, let's say, to the Buddhist priest, and he has a mantra of love for one hour, telling water, I love you, I love you, I love you. In one hour, the water will change its molecular structure. It will become hexagonal. Why hexagonal? The perfect geometrical shape when it is about the energy or vibration. And the Bosnian pyramid water, even though we sent it by the plane, it went through the rentgens and the x-rays, we can see that it did keep hexagonal structure with the beautiful crystal structure, energetically alive, happy water, vibrates high. When we hate, when we are violent, when we are jealous, we vibrate low. When we have love for the whole world, when we have smile on our face all the time, when we are in balance, we vibrate high. Everything in our life is about the vibration. So, the pyramid energy improves the molecular structure of the water as the next potential purpose of the pyramid energy. Number four, improves molecular structure of the food. Number five, it improves our uh, biomagnetic field, bioenergy field around our body, the auric field. Number six, it gets our chakras to balance. Number seven, it opens our chakras so energy can flow better. Number eight, our immunity goes up. Number nine, it improves our spiritual abilities and so on and so forth, simply in the 21st century. Solution for a lot of our problems would be the pyramid energy. We have just entered the underground labyrinth Ramne. Underground because we will be under the ground 30 to 40 meters. Labyrinth is a huge network of tunnels, chambers, passageways, underground lakes. Ramne, this part of Isoko is called Ravne. From the entrance of the tunnel to the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, 2.5 kilometers. So far, we have cleared and placed the wooden support in uh, 2,150 meters length. So, we have shortened our way to the pyramid for 650 meters, so we still have three quarters of the way to the pyramid. According to the Russian geophysicists, Professor Havroshkin and Professor Tsiplakov, who did measurements from the top of the pyramid using geoelectrical instruments, 280 meters below the top is a network of underground tunnels under the pyramid. And this entrance on the topographic map is also 280 meters below the top of the pyramid. So eventually we won't to meet those tunnels below the pyramid and connect with them. The temperature in the tunnels is 12 and a half degrees, humidity 75 to 80 percent, no bad poisonous gases. The good thing is that the level of oxygen is 20.7 percent everywhere, so we have ideal environment. 
to breathe and be inside. The pyramid from this point is located south, southeast. And this is the direction that we follow. Inside we can notice two different civilizations. The first one who built this underground network 30,000 years ago, and the second one who shut down all these tunnels, who sealed them off with the filler material 4,610 years ago. So what we actually do here, we remove the filler material with the physical labor only with the wheelbarrows, with the help of our employees and volunteers who come every summer season, June, July, August, September. And then we place the wooden support and we install the lights and slowly moving towards the biggest pyramid on the planet. This is our egg-shaped block. It is 70 meters from the entrance. We can see several features. We have like a seven hills here like it is a relief. We see the pointy parts of the block over here, showing the direction. And indeed, over there, we have another tunnel which is filled with the material. And most importantly, below this block, there is an underground water flow, 21 meters below us. And the water flows from this direction to that direction. And the width of the water is from here, to the other end and uh, I would say for the ancient people this block was the information. For us in 21st century this is just a piece of rock. For them the moment they look at it they knew there was underground water, there was movement of the energy, the length was su such, the width was such, the strength was such. For us in 21st century we don't deal with our planet anymore. We don't know where are the underground energy flows. Now, we know that uh, the underground water always means negative energy for humans. For us in 21st century, we always know that underground water flow means negative energy for us. But we have a dog laying on this block. Dogs are always attracted by positive energy. They instinctively go to the places where there is a positive energy and when there is the strongest positive energy. Sunny, our royal poodle, our assistant in this project, has chosen this block, meaning there is a positive energy. So, underground water, negative energy, this block, the ceramic blocks, Neutralize negative, transforming to the positive energy. Cats, on the other hand, they always go to the negative spots. So where the cat lays or stays, don't go there. If dog lays somewhere, you can go and lay over there as well. We are coming to the intersection. On my right and on my left side, we have side tunnels. They are coming at 90 degrees forming the intersection. Now, we can see on my right a drywall. Stones making very compact drywall without the binding material. And then we have the filler material, which is made from this non-compact material, which consists of pebbles, rocks, and sand. To my left, the same thing. Drywall, filler material, and the tunnel. They are filled completely, not just a few meters, but completely hundreds and hundreds of meters. Somebody was bringing hundreds of thousands of tons of material to close all those tunnels. And then a few meters after that, we have an interesting block. The block was discovered in the year 2006. And interesting, why? Because of the carvings that we are discovering here. This carving is the combination of geomet geometry and some alphabet symbols. And the most uh, known combination of the geometry and the science of alphabet is so-called runic symbols, runes. According to the mainstream science, they are about 2,500 years old, but according to independent scientists, at least 8,000 years old. The runic symbols, every symbol, had a meaning. 
they were very complex. Unlike our alphabet, our letters A, B, C, they have no meanings. Only when you put them together, five, six of them, you are forming the words. And the words have the meaning. But runes, every symbol had a meaning. So we have a total of eight runes here. And their translation, according to the professor from the United States, goes like this. The gate has been closed. We are at the standstill. We'll have to stay, to fight, defend ourselves and conquer until the cosmic gate is open again. This is our ceramic block K2. The first block that we saw, the egg-shaped block, is 350 kilos in mass. We had a couple more blocks, three and a half and four tons, are K1 and K3, and this is K2. This one is eight tons in mass. As we go deeper, the blocks are getting bigger, so our K5 block is over 100 tons. We have done very sophisticated analysis, Rentgen diffraction analysis, and phased analysis. According to them, this is artificially made ceramic block. So somebody in distant past had technology to make very high temperatures and very high pressures in order to make ceramic blocks. Using GeoRadar, we figure out that exactly in the middle of this block there was an oval object. It was not the air, or water, or ceramic, or metal, but mineral, most probably quartz crystal. So, the process we have here, 21 meters below us, underground water flow, water moves, releases the energy, activates the quartz crystal, it is surrounded by ceramic, ceramic vibrates, generating electromagnetic fields. What we measure here are two frequencies. 28 kilohertz, and this is the energy flow that moves through the labyrinth towards the pyramid. Then the pyramid pulls this energy, getting it through seven level passageways inside the pyramid and then through the top. And the second frequency is very low, 7.83 hertz frequency, which is the natural Schumann resonance, the best energy field for us. Outside, it's 12 to 15 hertz. Here, 7.83. It seems that the pyramid energy really has been stabilizing the energy field of the planet. We also notice that when we open our hands and we get them close to this block, that we can feel the energy. So we don't use our physical senses no more, but spiritual senses. We have 30 spiritual senses. Feeling the energy is one of them. So, this project has started as an archaeological project, and then it moved to the other aspects. Interdisciplinary scientific project, energy aspect, spiritual aspect, and healing aspect. And only if you apply the knowledge from all five aspects, then you can start understanding the ancient pyramids and megalithic sites around the world. I'm in the front of several closed tunnels behind me. The big question is, who made this huge underground tunnel network? And the next one, who and why would brought so much material to seal off all the tunnels? Our first thought was that they wanted to close them because there was something very valuable. For archaeologists today, very valuable means that it's sarcophagus, or it's a mummy of the king, or it's some treasure, gold, diamonds, or similar. However, there is something much more important than treasure, and that's technology. If you own the technology, you can get whatever you want. We realize that this is a huge tunnel network, maybe even 100 kilometers in length. So far we have cleared 2.1 kilometers. It's a huge job in front of us. We realize also that there is an energy flow in the tunnels. Flow that goes all the way to the pyramid, going through seven levels of tunnels, and then going through the very top as the energy beam. Now, in a case when we close the 
tunnels. That flow stops. And the pyramid from very strong and active energy machine becomes very weak machine. In a time when this pyramid was in original shape, it was very strong. But now, without the pyramidion, which is missing from the top, with the one side almost completely destroyed, the southern side, without, as far as I would say, a potential device inside or below the pyramid, and finally with all the tunnels closed, this is the weak machine which cannot affect the surrounding areas like during the original times. The pyramid energy can be used or misused. For example, with several pyramids you can form a network and you can make a protective shield around our planet. But also, as we use laser today, you can use them for the good purposes, like in medicine, or for bad purposes. You can kill the enemies. If in the wrong hands, the pyramid energy could be abused. Most probably something like that happened in the distant past. So original builders came back and made this machine very weak. As we move closer to the pyramid, I think we'll be finding more chambers. So far we have discovered five of them. And maybe open spaces under the pyramid. We might find some artifacts, which will be the clue about the ancient builders. We might find more chambers that are resonance chambers, not the chambers to bury the leaders of the societies. And eventually, I think we will find the knowledge that our civilization really needs. In 21st century, we have so many challenges. We realize that we are simply on the wrong path. With the pyramid energy, we will find some of the answers needed for our society. How to become free beings. How to become the beings who live in the balance between physical and spiritual. And finally, how to start living in harmony with the nature. Realizing that our planet is our mother. Thanks to the pyramid energy, I think we will be getting closer to the right path for our society.